How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donu here once again. This time we're going to take a look at 1.4 and 5 and we're going to talk about measurements and uncertainty. So if we take a look at these practice problems, which of the following are exact numbers? And there may be multiple. So remember exact numbers are not measured numbers. They're exactly that number. So the mass of a paperclip, well that's going to be a measured number. So it's not going to be an exact. Surface area of a dime, yeah we're going to have to calculate that so there's going to be measurements involved number of inches in a mile well, this is a definition it's an exact number we've defined how many inches are in a foot and how many feet are in a mile so that's an exact number there'd be an infinite number of sig figs because it's an exact number number of ounces in a pound same thing we've defined it so that's exact number of pages in the book well counting numbers are exact. So if you're like, how many people are in this room? That's an exact number, right? So the exact numbers would be choice C, D, and E. Of the following, which is the smallest mass? And then here's five different masses. Now here, what you need to know is the metric system prefixes. So if we take a look, 25 kilograms, I know kilo means 10 to the third. So it's really 25000, zero, 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 right? Yeah, grams. Right? Or if I wanted to put that in scientific notation, it'd be 2.5 times 10 to the fourth grams. So now I want to convert all these measurements to grams so I can compare them fairly. So nano means 10 to the minus 9, so it's really 2.5 times 10 to the 10 times 10 to the minus 9, which is going to give me 2.5 times 10 to the 1 grams. Pico means 10 to the minus 12, so I really have 2.5 times 10 to the 15 times 10 to the minus 12, which is going to give me that 2.5 times 10 to the third grams. Femto, we got 10 to the minus 15. So we go, all right, 2.5 times 10 to the ninth femtograms times 10 to the minus 15 equals 10, I'm sorry, 2.5 times 10 to the minus 6 grams. All right, so milli means 10 to the minus 3. So we got 2.5 times 10 to the minus 2 times 10 to the minus 3 equals 2.5 times 10 to the minus 5 grams. So if it's looking for the smallest one, we want the largest negative exponent, which is going to be choice D, 10 to the minus 6. So yeah, scientific notation. Precision, what's meant by precision? Precision is how close a measured number is to other measured numbers. It's not how close is a measured number to infinity. That's just kind of a nonsense answer. How close a measured number is to the calculated value? No. How close a measured number is to the true value? Well, this is describing accuracy, not precision. All right, so right answer for a different question. How close a measured number is to zero? Again, another nonsense answer. Which option is the highest temperature? So you got to do a little converting, right? So 38 degrees Celsius, 302 Kelvin, 96 Fahrenheit. So let's convert everything into Celsius. Let's do that. So this one can just stay 38 degrees Celsius. 302 Kelvin. Well, I know Celsius is going to equal... Um, Kelvin minus, I'm sorry, plus 273. Now it's minus. My bad. Celsius is always going to be the smaller number. So if I got 302 Kelvin minus 273 is going to give me that's going to give me 29 
degrees Celsius. Now Fahrenheit is kind of tricky. So for Fahrenheit to get Celsius, you got to take the Fahrenheit minus 32 and then times that by five ninths. So what we would get would be 96 minus 32 times by five divided by nine. And what we get when we do that is 35.6 degrees Celsius. So which of the, all right, well, freezing point of water at zero degrees Celsius. So which one of these is the highest temperature? Well, it's gonna be option one, right? None of this is really not a viable option. All right, five, accuracy has to do with what? Again, accuracy has to do with how close a measured number is to the true value. So accuracy has to do with the true value. Uh, the rest of these are the same kind of options as the previous problem before precision, but this time choice D. All right, a wooden object has a mass of that many grams and has a volume of that many milliliters. What is its density to an appropriate number of sig figs? So for density, we know it's gonna be mass over volume. So we plug it in, we got 20.564 grams divided by 27.44 milliliters. So for these two options, we gotta go how many sig figs are in my numbers? Well, there's five sig figs in that top number and four in that bottom number. So I have to round my final answer to just four sig figs. So your calculator, which is a liar, is gonna tell you 0.7 four nine four one six nine zero nine but it's it's lying to you because we can only be sure of four numbers so we start from the first non-zero and we count one two three four look to see what's next to it to see how you're going to round and it's going to round to zero point seven four nine four grams per milliliter as your final answer so yeah that's how you do that. Now, what if the problem's a little more complicated? Like here we got addition and subtraction, it's in parentheses. You're gonna save all of your rounding for the very end. So if I take a look, in these set of parentheses, I'm adding them together. So when I add them together, I end up with 31.87. But what I'm supposed to do when I add and subtract is to round to the least precise number. So the least precise number only has one decimal place. So I'm not gonna actually round, but I'm gonna keep track of how many sig figs this number would have, because this number is gonna get multiplied later on. So this, we'd have to round to the tenths place, which means this would end up only having three sig figs. 3.99 has three sig figs. Now, same thing with this problem over here. We're adding them together, and your calculator, which is lying to you, says you would get 12.726. But again, this number only has two decimal places, whereas this one has three. So when we round, we're gonna actually wanna only keep two decimal places. We're not gonna do that till the very end, but I need to go, how many sig figs would that number have? This number would have four sig figs. So now you can pick up the calculator and you can punch in exactly what you see here. And when you do that, you end up with 9.992244 four, four, two, two, four, et cetera, et cetera. And now I go, all right, well, how many sig figs does my final answer have to have? It's gonna have to have three sig figs. So I go one, two, three, look to see what's next to it, the determined rounding, and you end up with 9.99. No units on this number because there were none in the problem. So yeah, hope you found that helpful. I'll see you in class. Okay, Mike.